Hello, I'm Joe Muscolino, and I'm going to be showing you motion palpation assessment and joint mobilization treatment techniques for the neck. The specific way I'm going to show you is what I like to call a nice flowing assessment and mobilization technique, and it's done bilaterally. So I'm going to be using both of my hands, one on each side of our client's neck. To find the contact for where we're going to press, what we need to do is I want to place my hand not horizontally, not purely vertically either, but instead in between diagonally, somewhere about a 30 degree, maybe 45 degree angle. I'm going to come in and I'm going to even lift her head up just a little bit and place her head in the palms of my hands so I'm comfortably but firmly supporting her body weight, her head's, her head's weight. Okay, and do you feel comfortable and supported there? Mm -hmm. Okay, wonderful. And now I'm going to use my finger pads of my index middle ring fingers and I'm going to press in and the angle I'm going to press is going to be diagonally upward across to the other side of the body. And I'm going to be on the facets, the articular processes, the cervical pillar, same name or three different names for the same structure. So I'm going to just gently press in and feel for the motion there. Now the other hand is very important, my left hand here because it supports her because if I did not have that hand here then when I press her she would flop away from me. So it's important to use two hands when I press in with my right hand the left hand stabilizes her head. When I press in with my left hand the right hand stabilizes her head. And I'm just going to go up and down, well, let's start from going from the inferior lower neck going upward and I just go back and forth like this. And the assessment is feeling for the joint mobilization range of motion into joint plays, feeling for the ability of each individual segmental joint of the spine to move freely. And what you're really doing, if I break it down a bit more, is you press up until the end of passive range of motion and then you challenge it by pressing a bit more. And at each level, I would do that. I go to the end of range of motion and press a little more. If it's healthy, then I'm going to feel a nice little spring to the end of motion in joint play. If I get to a joint that doesn't move as well, and up here with Molly, I can feel less motion at her second cervical vertebra, then I know that's an area that's a bit locked up, and that's the level that really needs the mobilization. So I can turn the assessment into the mobilization by just pressing a bit more and there's no reason why I can't stay at that level and repeat it a few times. The advantage to joint mobilization is that you can have one particular joint that's locked up, hypomobile and not moving and you can stretch that joint every which way you want with full gross ranges of motion. But if the other joints nearby are hypermobile to compensate, then you'll never get motion into the hypomobile locked joint level. And that's where you can actually specifically direct the stretching motion because really joint mobilization is a very precise form of stretching you can direct the stretching motion directly to the joint that needs it. So to recap, you place your hands in about a 30 to 45 degree angle upwards toward the opposite side of the body. You support the head in the palms of your hands and you go one side, the other, and even if you're not able to fully count and be exactly sure which cervical joint level you're on, don't worry about that. Just work your way up the neck and back down. And if you feel a level that's a bit more locked, like you're hitting into a concrete wall, you can just stay there and add a little more joint mobilization. One important thing about this, you do not want to go too quickly back and forth. If you do that like this, especially with elderly clients, they may become dizzy. So this motion should be smooth and flowing and it should affect the stretch that you want, but it should be comfortable and relaxing for the client. I'm Joe Musclino, and this is Motion Palpation Assessment and Joint Mobilization Treatment Technique for the Neck.
Hello, I'm Joe Musclino, and I would just like to add something. I've shown you in three different video clips CR, contract relax stretching for the neck, AC, agonist contract stretching for the neck, and joint mobilization for the neck. And I'd like to add something about precautions, contraindications. If a client has any type of what's called a space occupying condition, space occupying lesion, such as a large bone spur from osteoarthritis, degenerative joint disease, or a pathologic disc, a bulging or herniated disc, it is contraindicated to bring the client into lateral flexion to that side. So if she had some type of an unhealthy disc or bone spur on the right side that might be occupying space and compressing on a spinal nerve as it comes out through the intervertebral foramen there, I would not want to close down that side and bring her into lateral flexion to that side. Okay, it's important to be aware of that. One more thing, joint mobilization really is a specific form of stretching, but before you choose to add this into your clinical practice, make sure that you're in compliance with the, regula with the regulations in your state or province or region, because joint mobilization is not legally allowed within the scope of practice for massage therapy in every part of the United States. So double check on that. Thank you, Joe Musclino. My pleasure sharing these tips with you.